Sometimes when we or our kids are upset or stressed, it feels hard to even think about what to do to feel better. We're so worked up that we can't think straight. And when our kids have really big emotions, we might feel like nothing we try is working or there's just no way to reason with them to make it better. And this gets trickier if kids have ADHD or anxiety. In this video, I'm going to explain how these reactions actually make sense and then how to use some quick coping skills to get parents and kids to calm down and get back to a place where we can work through problems and big emotions more effectively. At the end, I'll also talk about a detailed plan for parents of kids with ADHD who may need even more support with big emotions. I'm Dr. Jackie, I'm a licensed psychologist, and I make videos to help parents with child anxiety and ADHD. Let's jump right into why it feels hard to think straight when we have intense feelings or why logic or reasoning doesn't seem to work for our kids when emotions are big. When we have really intense emotions, our bodies and brains register something as stressful or as a threat and our nervous system gets automatically activated in order to protect us from danger. The body's fight or flight system, the sympathetic nervous system, automatically kicks in and prepares to keep us safe from the stress. Our body prepares by increasing our heart rate and blood pressure and slowing down digestion. With kids who are in fight or flight mode, you might see a lot of body movement like running or hitting or kicking or another kind of movement like yelling or screaming. These automatic reactions are the body's way of protecting them from the stress, trying to keep them safe. Think of this response as a red pathway. The brain is in crisis mode. The body's physiology is heightened when we have really big emotions. There's a counterpart to this though, one that automatically works to help our bodies slow down and rest and regulates our emotions. It's called the parasympathetic nervous system. When this part of the nervous system gets activated, our heart rate and blood pressure automatically decrease and our digestion starts up again. To eventually get to a calmer, more receptive place, which we can think of as a green pathway, we need the parasympathetic nervous system to kick in and help bring down the heightened arousal of our bodies. We need to be in a green pathway to be able to work through problems, use long-term coping strategies, and accept logic and reasoning. So how do you get the parasympathetic nervous system to kick in, to start regulating your body to eventually help get you to that green pathway? Try using tip skills to tip your body chemistry. Tip skills are like a temporary bridge to get from that red, emotionally intense pathway back to a green pathway, a safer, calmer, and less vulnerable place. I love the tip skills because they're easy coping skills that calm physical reactions of big emotions fast. These specific tip skills come from dialectical behavior therapy, and a former professor of mine, Dr. Jill Rathis, and her colleague, Alec Miller, have adapted them so they can work great for both kids and grownups. These skills are not a long-term fix, and we shouldn't expect kids to just learn and do these things on their own. The best way to teach kids these skills is by modeling. Let them see you do it when you're in a red pathway, trying to get back to that green pathway. When you're overwhelmed or feeling burned out, try these skills first to help calm your body fast and get you back to a place where you can think more clearly and parent more effectively. So here's what the letters stand for. The T is for temperature. We want to change the temperature of our face specifically. When we put cold water on our faces, it activates something called the dive reflex, which is the tendency of humans and other mammals for the heart rate to slow down when immersed in really cold water without oxygen. When we simulate this reflex, it will activate the slow down part of your nervous system. This is why you can use cold temperature on your face to calm your body fast. You can sit in a chair and put an ice pack, a cold wet washcloth, a cold drink on your cheekbones just below your eyes. Holding your breath for a few seconds at the same time seems to increase the effect. For some people, even just splashing cold water on your face can work well. Others may dunk their whole head in a bowl of ice water. The eye and tip is for intense exercise. Just 10 to 20 minutes of intense aerobic exercise can have a rapid effect on your mood and your body's chemistry. These are exercises like running or jumping or dancing. The key is to go all out for a short amount of time to get that higher intensity. Choose an exercise you enjoy and have easy access to. You don't need a gym or special equipment. Even going up and down the stairs quickly for 10 minutes will work. When the exercise stops, the parasympathetic nervous system gets activated to slow down your body's reactions. And remember, these are meant to be quick coping skills to slow down you and your kid's body chemistry to get you to a place where you can think more clearly about what to do next. 
And the next one is, if you found this video helpful so far, be sure to tap the like button and subscribe to let me know. It'll help it spread to more families who need it, and it motivates me to keep making more videos like this. So the first P and tip is for paced breathing. If you slow your breathing way down for one to two minutes, you'll activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Make your exhale longer than your inhale. Aim for a full cycle, an inhale and an exhale to take at least 10 seconds. Breathe through your belly and breathe out for longer than you breathe in. Again, the goal is to activate that part of the nervous system that slows the body down. And this tip and the next one are great because you can do them anywhere. You don't need an ice pack or to move around like in the first two examples. The second P is for progressive muscle relaxation. This is another way to slow the body down. You'll purposefully tense and then relax different muscle groups in your body for five seconds each, like your neck, shoulders, arms, legs, hands, and feet. Kids can pretend they're digging their toes into squishy sand or squeezing lemons in their hands to make lemonade. If you're really short on time, choose just a few muscle groups to tense and then relax or you can tense every muscle in your body and let the tension go as you say the word relax in your mind. Pairing the word relax with letting your muscles fully relax will also eventually help cue your body to calm down faster during tough moments. Remember, these skills are a short-term fix. They're more like a quick bridge that gets you to a place where you can use other coping skills or work through your problem more logically. The goal is eventually to get you and your kids back to a green nervous system pathway, one that's calmer, more open, and ready for problem solving. Sometimes when we are emotionally overwhelmed, the best thing to do is just get through the moment without making it worse because our bodies and brains go automatically into crisis mode. And the goal is just to survive the overwhelm. If you are a parent of kids with ADHD, big emotions and instantly going from zero to 10 can be more common and especially hard on kids and parents. If you found this video helpful and you're looking for more detailed support with ADHD, I have a comprehensive video for helping parents and kids with ADHD. It's packed with even more ideas for dealing with intense emotions, ways to set up your home and family that adapt to and accommodate for the ADHD, and how to have a strong and close relationship with your child even when things are frustrating and hard. It's what I would really do and the support I would need if my child were diagnosed with ADHD. So I recommend you go watch it next. See you there.